Oh. They really know how to tug at your heartstrings, don't they? <laughs> Hello, my lovely, beautiful Moa friends. It's LC. Welcome to my channel if you are new and if you are returning, welcome back. Today, I am pleased to be bringing you part two of my reactions to TXT's Japanese songs and music videos. So today, we're going to continue with three Japanese music videos and two brand new Japanese exclusive songs. So for this part, we have Runaway, which I forgot to do in the last video as well as Good Boy Gone Bad and Love Song. And then for the individual TXT Japanese songs, we have Rang and Hitori no Yoru. So let's jump right in. But before we do, please don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel. Two very boring minutes later. So for today's beverage of the day, we have some homemade sparkling lemonade. And by homemade, I mean I used my SodaStream machine to bubble the water and then I used Mio. <laughs> the lemonade flavor of Mio in here. I consider that homemade. For the amount that I can cook, that is about as homemade as it gets. And it's tasty, so I'm proud of myself. All right, so we're going to get started first with a music video that should have been in the last part, <laughs> which is Runaway. And my usual headphones that I use for these videos are broken, and I have ordered some replacements, but until they come, I'm going to be using these. And there's kind of like a noise-canceling element to these headphones, so I really, really hope that I'm not shouting into the microphone. So I'll be doing my best. So let's get started with Runaway. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they look so young. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> Their little Roomba. Very strange to hear this with the Japanese lair. <laughs> Very whimsical. All these like video game references. Just general whimsy, you know? Not just with this and this part, but also like earlier on here when they had their own almost like cards or like, ugh, what do you call it? Not like Pokemon cards, but, or Magic the Gathering cards, but almost like, why am I blanking? Anyways, cards that kind of show off the type of powers they have because like Subin here has Spark, Yeonjun has Thunderbolt, Bumgyu has Speed, Taehyun, what was Taehyun's? Uh, so Magic Punch? And then Hunin Kai was a Tornado. But yes, let's resume. <laughs> this must have been really fun to film. <laughs> like rebuilding the laser thing. <laughs> Just saying, F it. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, and they're doing all their powers. <laughs> the most chill relic of what? Oh my. So this is maybe not taking them to a good place? Okay, never mind. There was a <laughs> art class. <laughs> I love seeing them wield all their powers. Oh my gosh, N64 games. Oh, the nostalgia blowing into the bottom. Blue magic. Hmm. Well, that was a lot of fun. Oh, now I just got a really bad craving to play some N64. <laughs> Like, I loved Mario Kart as a kid, Mario Party as a Canadian, played a lot of NHL, Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, the, the N64 was pretty much obsolete by the time I was about 10 or so. So it was mostly like little kid games that I would play on the N64. But uh, now I'm even wondering, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the N64 was discontinued before Kai was even born. But anyway, I digress. And it's so wild to see how much they have grown up in two years. And what I found interesting about this one in particular is that sometimes the Japanese translations and the sound of the song compared to hearing it in Korean like sounds a bit jarring or it doesn't quite fit because it must be really difficult to translate a song to another language still have the same vibe the same like cadence and rhythm to the lyrics because for example from English to French French there's a lot more words <laughs> in French to say the same thing in English so if you had to do an English song in French that would just be so difficult because you'd have to like sing way faster or you know change the words around a little bit um, but then you could possibly doing that lose the kind of meaning of the song. So I found that this song more than any other Japanese song from TXT I've heard translated the best where it didn't really sound like it was missing anything or I wasn't like mm, kind of <laughs> when I was hearing some of the Japanese parts. It all flowed really nicely and blended very nicely together like if I'd never even heard the Korean version i might have just thought that this was the original so i enjoyed this one quite a bit okay 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 so let us now go to zero by one equals love song i know i love you featuring ikuta lilis which is our japanese version of the song here and we also have a japanese music video to go with it so interesting to hear this new feature on the song because of you know at this point having heard many versions of this i'd like to see how this kind of stacks up in comparison so let's listen Oh wow, that looks so real. Like the lighting is amazing. Oh my goodness. Hmm. All the plastic bottles. Hmm. How does this feel darker than the original? Which is already dark. Wow. Okay, so a couple of things are standing out to me really strongly 
from this so far. So the first one is, I really want to echo my statement <laughs> from the last song in terms of the Japanese just flows so well together in this. And I feel like I can really feel the raw emotion in their singing, in like their delivery here um, compared to the Korean, which... You know, the Korean was already <laughs> really intense. And like I said, it was it was dark, but this somehow feels like darker and more intense. Uh, but then the second thing also is that Akuta Leela, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but she sounds similar to Sorry, but not like a exact copy. Uh, but her vocals just blended really, really nicely in the chorus there where, you know, I like that it isn't too different, but there is like a resemblance there. It doesn't sound too different, too jarring, but still has like a different flair and feel to it. So yeah, I'm really loving this so far. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, those wings. Just seems like broken down. Doesn't it just feel like, ugh, like punches a bit harder? Oh, I just noticed all the blood all over their uniforms. What on earth? Wow. Oh, look at that shot. I have goosebumps. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh. Yeah, I really like her vocals. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, they just disappeared. But you could really feel the intensity of the emotion in this, like the, the anger and the angst. So a couple of things I'm very curious about. First thing is the wings that Taehyun has because I'm pretty sure in another video, it was one of the other members that had a similar kind of like mechanical wing structure. Like I'm pretty sure it wasn't Taehyun. Okay, now I'm going to look this up. <laughs> yes, okay, I knew it. So it was Kai in Nap of a Star. And interesting now, so what is the significance of that? That they, you know, switched places? Or that this is, you know, Taehyun's now wearing the wings. And like the blood all over their uniforms. Like this one just for some reason felt so much more like high stakes. And the way they're just plummeting towards the ground like that with the asteroids or the falling stars or whatever it <laughs> was like the intensity of this all was just so palpable i find it so fascinating that of all the different versions that exist of this song that each one felt very distinct and still at the same time tying back to the original so yeah really really 
fascinated by this one like wow but okay we are going to go to our last music video of this video which is good boy gone bad the japanese version and the rest of the songs that i will be reacting to for this video all come from the good boy gone bad japanese single so let's go here with the good boy gone bad music video Oh. Interesting point for them to kind of pick up at. Who's this? Hmm. Is 112 like 911 in Korea? Wow, this is very different. <laughs> from the previous version. Oh my. Some of these callbacks. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Flushing all that money. <gasps> oh my gosh. They're not messing around here. <laughs> are they gonna hit that car with a crowbar? Okay. Okay. <laughs> For a second I thought he was gonna try to break in and smash the windows. This does feel very love songy. Ooh, yes, the fish. This feels like an alternate dimension ending to love song. With the blue hair. Oh my gosh, okay. This video is tripping me out. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I did not mean love song. I meant loser lover. <laughs> I don't know why, but all the time I mix up the titles of those two songs, which is like so many throwbacks here. Like at the very start, the car going off the cliff, like at the end of Loser Lover. And then, you know, like the fish popping up. It almost seems like it's maybe resuming right at the end of that music video. And also like <laughs> them throwing away all the money and like flushing it down the toilet. It almost seems like they were doing it for like the chaos of it all, of like robbing a bank, everything like that, of just for the chaos. But let's keep going. Oh, getting chased. Is this the police? The girl called? That part never fails to just get me. So they're gonna burn it now. Yeah, it really does feel like it's just for the chaos. Oh my gosh, the acting in this was impeccable. So many different things I feel like you could dig into here. Like why is she calling the cops? 
on Yeonjun? Why is she the one who's selling him out? Because loser lover, it was like very much partners in crime type of thing. But now things have turned for the worse. And then at the end, Bumgyu like falling off of his bike again. And, you know, it kind of seems like at the end here, Subin is the only one who gets caught. And I wonder if there's a significance to it's like the leader who's the one who's caught. And then, you know, Yeonjun kind of driving away really upset and frustrated and then the part where they're kind of like pushing each other like what is it that they're fighting about like oh I just have <laughs> so many questions about all of this and it's ugh, I just love it when they make these music videos that just like make you think and try to like, put all the pieces together and do that like mental math with the numbers flying so yeah for really any of these music videos if you have any thoughts or theories or like confirmed theories I always love to hear about those so let me know down in the comments okay so let's move on now to our new Japanese song well new and that it came out in August <laughs> starting first with ring so what kind of vibes are we gonna get here I don't know so let's find out Ooh. kind of sounds video gamey heart instinctively ends up thinking of your smile. Oh, the vocals here are amazing. Those falsettos. Your tears? Wait, what? Your tears shine brighter than the ring you took off. Ooh, so is that like the, the reference before with the ring and the sink from the Go Boy Gone Bad music video? I don't know if those two are related. In a way, this is kind of like reminding me of Thursday's Child, like the song, not the album, in terms of this almost like bittersweet feeling to the song. Because they're saying, even the way of loving someone who isn't you, no matter what, no matter what, I just don't know how to do it. Of like, clearly this relationship has ended, like the ring has been taken off, but they're still like hanging on to something because with Hyun Kai's part saying, no matter how many days pass, I keep looking for you in this world in front of me. Or it's like, even though it's over and it's done, they're kind of just expecting their person to be in front of them and after our last kiss and that little gap between us your tears shined brighter than the ring you took off oh that lyric just like like stabbed to the heart and just the fact that they're saying like our last kiss it almost implies there's like a mutual parting there because they knew it was their last kiss and then she was upset about it too so that's why i feel there's almost like a bittersweet element to it of it seemed like it was like a mutual parting but maybe some more of that will be revealed like the cause for the split will be revealed in the rest of the song <laughs> Ooh. Wow, okay, so when we are both prior when we are both prioritizing each other's individual styles, but the truth is we don't match. So there you go. It just wasn't meant to be. But still scared of hearing that. Didn't want to believe it. Your lies. Hmm. I feel like they're doing a really amazing job, just like with love song of like 
conveying the emotion. So they're acknowledging that like growth needs to happen. Again, Thursday's child vibes. I love Bumby's voice so much. like this one quite a bit like it was an interesting journey from the start of the song until the end where it felt like it was almost like the five stages of grief <laughs> in one song whereas with the Thursday's Child album it was an individual song for that topic but we just went like whoosh right through all five of those in this song is what it felt like and I kind of want to go back to that bridge part where if there's at least one reason for the separation it's for me to change from what I was yesterday so like that growth is almost the most important thing rather than the relationship it's like allowing for that growth to happen and that ultimately being what matters most which is why they can kind of be like at peace with the separation so again <laughs> quite a journey from the start of the song to the end yeah I, I like this one quite a bit but let's now go to Hitori no Yoru which I would really love to know what that means okay so <laughs> Google Translate says alone night night maybe night alone hmm so maybe picking up on some more themes from the last song there maybe it's a continuation so let's let's listen oh, Oh my gosh. This sounds like it could be in a K drama or a J drama, I suppose. You are radiant. Their vocals all here are insane. I need to stop. <laughs> because, oh, they're breaking. Oh, they're breaking my heart here. When you're laughing, when you're crying, it's always in front of someone who isn't me. Like, oh, oh just the, the unrequited love vibes here. It just, oh gosh, it's like a stake to the heart. I think we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> had that unrequited love they really know how to tug at your heartstrings don't they <laughs> i don't know if there's any other group like txt that does it so effectively <laughs> just like ugh, puts that steak in your heart and then gives it a nice little twist but okay let's keep going oh, 
I just want to comfort them. Give them a big hug. They're like, it's okay. You'll find someone else. Oh my gosh, this was so heartbreaking, but like heartbreaking in the best way, if that makes sense. Like the burn, the pain is so good. Like all of their vocals on this song was just top tier. And there's just, oh, there's so much emotion in everything that they do in their music. As part of my job, I teach emotional intelligence courses. And one of the things that I try to help people with is emotional self-awareness. And by doing so, being aware of all the kinds of different emotions that you can feel, where there's almost like zones of emotions, where there's four quadrants which have to do with the level of energy and the level of pleasantness. So there's the four quadrants. There's the like high pleasantness, high energy, which is like yellow. There's the low energy, high pleasantness, which is green. High energy, low pleasantness, which is red. And then low energy, low pleasantness, which is blue. So I feel like TXT more than any other group can hit the yellow, can hit the green, hit the blue, hit the red of those emotional quadrants like so effectively. Where again, just, it's so clear to me that the emotional intelligence is strong with them. The way they can tap into this with not just the lyrics, but also the delivery and their acting. Like it, it takes a special kind of EQ to be able to like tap into that sort of thing and to be able to portray it effectively. You need to understand it. You need to have felt it yourself to make it convincing to the audience. So yeah, I'm just endlessly <laughs> impressed by txt and it makes me sad that there's no more new stuff <laughs> to listen to unless i've missed something and you can let me know in the comments but you know for now it's kind of just waiting until the next comeback i think so friends thank you so so much for joining me today i hope you enjoyed this reaction getting through the rest of their japanese discography so i really like this last one hitori no yoru but i'm kind of wondering what my favorite of their japanese songs is overall maybe ito because you know the christmas vibes were strong and christmas is coming up i don't know i have to give it a, a good think but if you have a favorite of their japanese songs then let me know down in the comments i would love to hear about your faves. I would also like to give a shout out to my $5 patrons who are Azaya Life, Catherine H, Dancing on Fire, MJN, Aaron M, Hope to Dust, Jennifer O, Kirsten, Chris M, Leah B, Lisa H, Mila B, Nicey64, Sophia S, Tiffers and Vicos. If you would like to get a shout out at the end of every single one of my YouTube videos, as well as early access to my YouTube videos and access to exclusive content that is not available on my YouTube, I have multiple TXT reactions that are available on my Patreon. You can support me for as little as $3 a month by visiting me at patreon.com slash Lauren Claire. But until next time, if you have some more recommendations for TXT content to check out, let me know in the comments. But again, until then, I hope you are doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day.